Hi again and welcome to the channel. Let's watch another cool episode of Harold Tribune World Youth Forum. What is that old forum? Well, you should watch this video showing above for that. In this episode teenage foreign delegates are discuss about what's wrong with American high schools? Participated following students. Francois Munier from France. Ben Kofi from Ghana. K. R. Krishnan from India. Ruth Loeb from Israel. As usual presenter of the discussion is lovely Mrs. Helen Height Waller. Let's see the video. What is your chief reaction to American high schools? Uh, the American teenagers feel that their form of education is a right and not a responsibility. I was struck to see that there was a lot of in anti-intellectualism in uh, American high schools and I was shocked to see that the scholar is despised. I think that the American high schools do not fulfill the purpose of education and a school is more a place to spend time in than really to study. I feel that the average American student is rather indifferent and negligent and education tends to feed tastes, I mean tastes, rather than cultivate them. <laughs> This is The World We Want, featuring student delegates to the New York Herald Tribune Forum for High Schools, presented for the 12th year by the New York Herald Tribune in cooperation with Pan American World Airways, Trans World Airlines, and Scholastic Magazines. Now here is your moderator, Ellen Hyatt Waller. Welcome to The World We Want, a television presentation of the New York Herald Tribune Forum for High Schools. It features young people from all over the earth, in unrehearsed discussion of a few of their common problems. Each one of these young people, 34 in all from 34 countries, is the winner of a nationwide forum competition held under the auspices of the ministries of education in their own countries. After winning the competition, they were brought to the United States by Pan American World Airways and Trans World Airlines. They'll be here for three months as guests in four different American families and host communities. Tonight, we're going to be talking about education, how high schools here compare with high schools in other countries. But let me introduce you to the four participants in this discussion. First, from Ghana, here's Ben Kofi. Ben, um, how are things going? You have been learning anything since you've been here? Well, I came here with the idea that perhaps the whites are superior, as I heard about Little Rock situation and all the segregation programs. But oh, bet me, the Negroes are the same as the whites. We all have the same intellectual capacity, and I don't just understand the segregation problem. Uh, how about you, Ruth Lev from Israel? I really didn't have any problems. My families are perfect, and we have uh, understanding between all of us. But there was one thing I wanted to mention. I was asked by people here in the United States and by my family at home, what do I think about America? What is America? I tried very hard to answer this questions, question, but I'm completely confused. I visited till now two communities, and both of them are so different, but still in America. So I really don't know what is America. <laughs> How about you, Francoise Monnier from France? I disagree with Ruth. Though they seem to contradict themselves, I think as a whole, their attitude toward life is the same in all the places I have visited. So we've got a disagreement here already. You say America is full of contradictions, and you, Francoise, from France, you say not true. They're basically the same all over. Is that right? Yes, How right. about you, Krishnan, from India? Well, I have been having a little problem. You see, I am becoming such a complete part of my family, having such a personal concern in their interests and problems, that I find it increasingly difficult to maintain a purely detached and objective point of view. And in that sense, I'm rather afraid I'm not being a good delegate. <laughs> we'll never criticize you for that. Only too glad to hear it. Now, on the subject of education, uh, you started out with some fairly critical statements. I know you're all aware that uh, nothing you've said uh, could not be matched by things that American educational statesmen have been saying about our schools for some time. But I do want you to feel that there is very real worth in objective observers like you from outside coming into our schools and saying what you frankly and honestly feel. 
Now, to start off with, I'd like to ask a leading question because it seemed to me that were some of you saying that you disagreed with the very system of American education? Uh, well, no. In fact, it was, the, it was my impression before I came here that the content of education was uh, drifting to mere superficialities of technique and I felt that the real purpose of education was being clouded over. But I have found out and I am now fairly convinced that the mistake doesn't lie in the uh, system itself. It's not a mistake of principle, it's only a mistake of implementation of the principle. But Krishnan, how can you say it? Can you say that the system is good when a child can cho choose whatever he wants when he has four subjects a week or a day? Well, there is a great deal of advantage I mean, in having such a great uh, range of choice and disadvantages too. But I feel that more and more it's up to these teachers and the students to make full use of the opportunities that have been afforded them. And in this connection, I'm of the opinion that the American students do not re seem to realize the merits of their own system and, and hence as a result of foregoing the results that their education system is well, capable of achieving. I perfectly agree with Krishna. Um, the system is very good, but the only thing that is only uh, too loose the children are allowed to learn just a little. They have uh, very little syllables so that they have so many of their leisure time to spend and waste time. And uh, I know that that's the only thing which is wrong with, with the education. If not, it's quite all right. My opinion is completely the opposite of yours. I think they have completely lost the goal of education itself. And they don't try to make people, uh, the students, think nor develop their mind. But... Uh, they only make uh, perfect technicians and not personalities of high cultures as we, as we try to do in our country. Well, no, I must disagree with you, Francis. Uh, in my opinion, the basic objective behind American education is to turn out um, intelligent citizens rather than exceptional intellectuals. And, but I must admit that uh, in trying to eliminate intellectual arrogance, American education has overstepped the limit. And as a result, uh, stimulus for original thinking is lacking. But you'll find the Excuse other... Me, uh, Krishnan, do you think that this system gives out uh, intel uh, intelligent uh, citizens? Uh, well, I do. I was just going to explain my oh, point no, of view. Oh, no, I don't. I think uh, they are rather um, even indoctrinated, I could say. Well, in all fairness, you should share my points of view. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. You'll find that the other extreme is true in India. I think we concentrate rather disproportionately on the purely academic side so that Indian education um, tends to turn out a brilliant social misfits, I should say. And they, there's nothing else for them to do except to decay and wither out their own absolutely limited and sterile fields. But I find that the education here aims at a more harmonious development of and I find it takes into consideration the other aspects of personality too. But yes. how can you have a personality if you have no knowledge to lie upon um, and if you merely have opinions that have been given to you as uh, slogans or cliches? Well, I should say the method of teaching in America is one of the most scientific and I, I believe that it's based on uh, results of latest scientific research. For example, one thing that uh, impressed me most is the attempt to correlate the different facets of a subject and uh, different subjects too so that facts may be appro uh, appreciated in the uh, proper perspective. For example, in the classes on history I found that map work uh, formed quite an integral part of the course and after attending a class on American Revolution I should say I gained a better idea of how geographical factors influenced American education and one other very good aspect is uh, the class on social living, uh, in which mean almost all aspects of um, social life are uh, discussed and the customs of various societies are compared and contrasted. Well, wait, Krishnan. I'm trying to disagree with you on this point again. You see, they all have uh, the amenities. They have the facilities. I know that. That's why the American form of education is good. Everything runs all right. But they are not given much to learn. They are not yeah. given in love to learn so well, that... Um, they waste time and even waste worse, energy. Even worse, they don't, uh, they don't try to coordinate what they learn. What they learn what, one year, uh, the next year they shut the door and take another subject. For example, they study chemistry without any physics, physics without a sufficient background in mathematics. And I think this is completely well, uh, 
No, uh, not at all training the mind and the judgment. Well, that was not the point I was trying Wait to put Give on. Ruth a chance. She's been trying. Uh, <laughs> Christian and Ben, did you... You went to these schools. Did you see what's going on? They have six periods a day, of which three are real studying. Let's say studying. The pupils... Well, in some class, they really study. But it, this is really a minority. I, I went to classes where... The teacher was talking, and the pupils were listening. They uh, got the uh, teachers um, talking like God, and didn't even ask or discuss it. And what can you get of something in one year? Well, I believe that the method is uh, designed to, um, uh, to train the student to bear more and more initiative. For example, uh, the students are assigned specific research tasks about various um, themes, say religion, uh, uh, many students, I mean some students are uh, expected to submit a thesis on Hinduism and say on some Mohammedanism, Christianity and so on. Then they turn in the reports, have a discussion. But I believe it's at this stage that the error creeps in. And the students, I think they are not in the least bit conscious of the value of what they are doing. I think that on the, on the opposite, the discussion is a very good thing, but they scarcely have enough background to make their discussion uh, constructive. And when they have a discussion with their teacher, they agree more with what the teacher says because they, can't dis uh, they don't have knowledge enough for, to disagree. For example, on a course on French Revolution, they don't know about enough about, no, I mean Napoleon's war, they only know how to say, uh, Napoleon was a jolly good fellow. But they don't know what he did to be a <laughs> jolly good fellow. You mean they learn like parrots? You well, mean they learn like parrots just shouting Napoleon was a good warrior or whatever you mean? No, I can never agree with that. No. The emphasis is more on attitudes rather than on facts. So I wouldn't say, I mean, you, you must agree with me that uh, history, is, history doesn't constitute mere a set of well-tabulated data. It's the, uh, you might say, the social... Uh, broad social patterns which influence these events and I believe in that respect American schools teach history in a far better way than Indian schools do. Oh, maybe Indian schools, but this is your point. <laughs> <laughs> but for example, they study world history in one year and the next year they study American history as if world history took as much time as American history, which is, every, well, is a short thing. And uh, uh, when they study history, they jumble the chronological... Uh, well, when I say correlate, you say jumble. I mean, the difference lies there. Yes, surely. Uh, First what of do all, you excuse me, just, are you going to let Krishnan get by with this point that his type of education, which I gather is also yours, makes sterile, uh, sterile social misfits? Oh, it makes, yes, in one point, it uh, doesn't advantage the middleman. I mean, that we agree. Yes, yeah. but in another point, American uh, education also disadvantages uh, for social adjustment, and uh, they don't see that when they make good scholars, these are so experts, and so uh, mm, they give so, important, so much importance to no. the technical, more than the high culture and the general... Uh, training of mind. That might be, but this has no relation with social adjustment. That's a preposterous statement. I find that uh, a clear proof of this is the complete success of co-education. For example, I have noticed much of this vulgar harsh play between the sexes in Indian schools, but I find there exists a very healthy feeling of comradeliness here, and I think that's a clear proof, unmistakable proof, that they are socially better adjusted. Surely, surely I do agree, but I think that, uh, for example, when uh, they they train experts and specialize on one subject. Uh, it's be uh, because of that that uh, scholars are misunderstood in their country, because sc scholars are only uh, put the emphasis only on one part of sciences, for example, and now that they have, uh, they fear the Russian Sputniks, everybody is going to turn to science, as they should uh, give a more general uh, education and not have fads as they seem to have. Well, uh, excuse me. Wait, let Ruth have a chat. <laughs> She's been Krishnan, did you um, give attention to the pupil's attitude to a pupil who wants to study? Did you see what his situation is among other pupils? Well, I wouldn't say that the um, system, I mean, retards the progress of a brilliant boy. I will say it fails to provide the stimulus. Uh, in this I have sense that Ruth has a point. She's asking a rhetorical question here. Answer it, will you, Ruth? Well, they... 
they just they push him out of society. Did you see what the, the, the student's attitude to studying in general is? Uh, well, I have noticed that, but I believe this could be uh, rectified by the teachers laying more insistence on the students. No, look, I went from one to the other. I went to the pupils, and uh, they really agreed that um, the fact they don't study um, as much as they can, but say, they say the fault is not in us. I went to an English class and the teacher gave back the examinations and they were horrible and she was so mad at them and she told them. And one pupil told me, um, why does she, uh, it, why is she mad about us only when we are seniors? Why doesn't she start when we are um, sophomores or freshmen? You're, you're I right. You're right. Don't you think that uh, trying to educate masses uh, brings a much, much uh, less high level and they don't have enough quality? Well, no. I disagree with you, Francois. Um, trying to educate people, if you have the schools and you have the money, you can educate people, then why not educate all? Why do you want to educate oh, some... Oh, I don't, I don't say that I don't try to educate everybody, but no, but, uh, everybody doesn't have intellectual ability. Everybody has different capacities. And why uh, try to give intellectual ability to everybody or uh, pretend everybody has intellectual ability? This is not realistic. Well, they give the, uh, the boys the chance to, I mean, study to a certain level, at least to the age of 16, because they have money and the buildings to do. So well, that we, they are we, right, they are perfectly right to do that. We'd give uh, as much education uh, to a boy of 13 than they give to a boy of 17. For example, I took the English Regents uh, examination of New York State and the first part was exactly what we give to a nine-year-old student in our country and the second part w is, was what we give to a 13-year-old student. Why can't, why are they doing it at seven years well, old? that's quite all right, but I must drag you to a point that you were discussing a few minutes back. You said that uh, American education aims at educating the masses on a very general basis, but I should say uh, in democracies of the future, uh, the destinies of nation lie in the hands of the masses and not in the hands of a select intelligentsia. And I believe that uh, to attempt to uh, uh, train a specialized band of um, you might say select group uh, is nothing but um, you might say aristocratic um, imperialism in another form. I do completely disagree with you. I think that democracy is giving the opportunity to everybody to fulfill his capacities. If his capacities are not intellectual, well, anyway, American high, uh, high schools just drag the thing three years later and after high school they make the difference anyway. You no. mean to say um, a grouping must be affected, mean uh, separating the students of higher ability? Um, look. No, no, you I know. say that uh, <coughs> you, you seem to accuse us of separating dumb people and clever ones. But well, uh, they, they have, uh, we, they separated at college anyway, so they have to do it. But, but we don't really consider somebody who is not in our high school no, inferior. I'm rather of the opinion that you would advocate such a move in the high school stage. Am I correct? Yes. Well, I'm vehemently opposed to that because I believe that a student is not uh, fully conscious of his own capacities and it's not up till that he's 18 or 19 that he can overcome, uh, you might say, inhibitory influences. For example, at the age of 13 or 14, a, uh, a student is pretty much the victim of um, influences, oh, say, oh, for example, the family. Yes. So for what is the guidance in a school? <laughs> yes, that is true, but don't you think that uh, American students do, do not even have the opportunity to find what they are at 18 because they didn't, during all their high school, study enough to know if they were uh, able or not. They only have about four compulsory subjects. And Wait a minute, Francoise, let's come back to Krishnan's point, which I think is fair. When in France do you decide, at what age do you decide whether a boy can go, a girl can go on and study or not? Uh, we decide all at about uh, 12 and then 14 and then 17, but uh, differences are so slight that we can change with a little work. But the thing is we uh, make, discriminate the schools so the the higher students can go away the most possible, can uh, well, work the most. Well, you could find most. some justification for such a division at the age of 17, but there's absolutely no ground for the division being affected before that age. But how why? do you do it in why, Israel? Why do you uh, just want a second, to Francois, how do you do it in, in Israel? In Israel, um, I wanted to add something. 
look, we have a completely different system of education and still most of the kids get an education. And uh, after the kids are 15, uh, 14 when they finish elementary school, eight years of elementary school, you have three kinds of high schools. A high school which is mainly for preparations for um, college and university, university and then um, vocational uh, school and agricultural. And the kids, they get a very good education in all three of them. If they go to a vocational school, it doesn't mean that they don't learn English or they don't learn history. And also afterwards, in society, there is no division. That is true in France, too. We, uh, we have separate schools, but those who come from an inferior, well, what you call an inferior school in your mind, is much more educated than an American student, even though he is in an inferior school. And uh, at the same time, we don't water down the best students. No, I never meant to attribute any inferiority or superiority. Um, what I'm trying to say is what, you, what an adult might um, considered different, perhaps you might be able to appreciate the fact that it's not a question of inferiority, it's a question of just different capacities. Surely. But uh, could you expect an 11 or 12 year st uh, student to realize this? Well, he does not have to realize it. Uh, he uh, passes an exam saying if he has uh, learned enough and uh, enough what he can understand for his age, if he does not, it means that he does not have the capacity to go further in that way. No, well, I What you all are discussing about is mass production or quality production. Yes. Uh, well, well, not exactly a grouping of students according to abilities in high school. Well, I feel that um, in this age of Russian Spunics, I think um, quality production should be more or less preferred to mass production. I feel um, the Americans are making a mistake by grouping all the, uh, uh, the talented boys and the untalented boys in the same school and therefore those who are talented and can learn further or can develop their brains are retarded by those who are less talented and at the age of th uh, 18 where he graduates and leaves school perhaps a boy who's, who is talented will not go in straight for higher education but will go to the business and work and thus he's lost forever. That is, leads to a very simple and straightforward question. You talk about us not doing enough for the gifted. Will you tell us what you're doing in your countries for the ungifted? Uh, well, in my country, they can shift to more uh, what you would call vocational schools, technical schools, secretarial schools that give also an education, but do not, uh, they do not uh, help, um, oh, prevent the good students in high school from doing more advanced work. They also have a good education. Well, I believe American education is so flexible that it, it in no way is a, um, it doesn't retard the progress of a brilliant student. I mean, but I must agree. I believe it does. It does retard. Uh, I wouldn't oh, say yes, it retards. It does. It does. I wouldn't oh. say so. I, I stoutly defend. But I must say that it fails to provide the extra stimulus for such a student. But it's, um, it's not correct to say that uh, uh, it discourages such a student. No, it, it does. doesn't. Christian, look. Um, there are so many states in the United States. Now, supposing um, we have a, a thousand high schools in one particular state, and uh, uh, about 500 of these thousand schools are regarded as uh, superior or, well, superior high schools, and those who are talented will somehow be selected to develop the ability. You see, in this world of Russian spoonies, as I've been saying, we need people to develop and then to do something better. If the Americans are not able to develop now, there is a threat to the whole Western world. And we can't believe in mass production by retarding everybody. Uh, that is true. They have the very good thing of developing good citizens. And we don't have this in our country and we should exactly. need it. Um. But uh, if you want to be happy citizens, you first have to protect them and to be strong enough to keep your country from somebody else. Yes, hmm. how does that prove your point? Well, uh, if you only make happy citizens and no scholars to uh, increase uh, science, for example, and uh, culture in itself, you might be, uh, uh, well, the America might lose its world power. But you must agree an educated leadership is absolutely futile when the mass, I mean, the masses are uneducated. No, but the masses are when not uneducated. <laughs> um, we agree that um, every pupil has a different um, capacity and ability to study. Don't you think, Krishna, that if every pupil we get the uh, education that fits him individually, this will the, be the best way for a healthy country? Uh, well, I believe a that... harmony uh, between the different... No, a student must have a minimum background of all subjects, irrespective of whether his interests lie in that or not. 
I believe this is an essential prerequisite for a broad-based education, which you say is the uh, which you say must be the inevitable aim of all systems of education. It's not correct to uh, train a student purely in the sciences or in the arts without any um, without any at least some rudiments of the other. I surely yeah. agree with you. Yes, uh, the American students don't don't have. Uh, time or don't have opportunity to train their mind. For example, they only consider foreign language as something uh, having something to do with commercial relations with foreign countries. But we say that you don't know your language if you can't compare it to another language. And uh, it's more to uh, appreciate the value of your own language that we study foreign languages. Well, yes, American education does not pose any challenge to the serious student at all. It's purely superficial, but I must, I won't attribute this to the system. But I gather from what you say that education is not compulsory in India. Yes, that's right. Oh, because it is compulsory in my country. Well, uh, so the, the, reason is, the reason it's not compulsory is the government cannot afford to provide the means for free education. Christian, well, excuse me a minute. You've all let Francoise get by with something that she said several minutes ago. Did I hear you rightly when you said that the American student was indoctrinated? Oh. Uh, not, not exactly, but... Uh, I'm glad I misunderstood. <laughs> it, it is true that what he learns, uh, he does not learn it, uh, he's not taught it objectively. Because he does not have uh, opportunity to learn uh, the facts, for example, history objectively, he studies more current events than uh, the world history uh, itself. Well, how about current events? Don't you, in France, don't you no, study newspapers uh, and... not at all. On the opposite, we stop history in the 1920s because we find that uh, the last years, we can't uh, study it objectively. And so we, f we feel that each student has the opportunity to choose his opinions. And if he has to fight for it, he, his opinions are much stronger. But, uh, did I hear you write about the newspapers? <laughs> You mean, say, you don't use newspapers at all in your uh, study courses? No, not at all. How do you mean to justify this? Well, uh, I think it's just, uh, well, that is right. We, we cannot be indoctrinated because uh, a school must uh, give an opinion to his students when he shows him the actual newspapers. No, Our time's almost up. We'll have some more discussion about this as to whether mm -hmm. the proper education should stop at 1920 or go on to 1958. One quick question, if anybody's got a quick answer. If your schools in Ghana and India were open free to everybody through the age of 16 tomorrow, would your schools have any of the problems that the American schools have? I, I feel uh, children are the same everywhere, and therefore we shall have the same problems. But I think we are more respectful, and therefore the problems will be less than... You the say you'd have the same problems. Anybody yeah. disagree? I said that we, we would have all the problems, but we wouldn't do it, because we fear these problems. I said we'll have none of the problems. At this juncture, it'll be an uh, immediate success, because we have not fallen into the habit of taking things for granted. We will be able to uh, realize the merits of that system over our own system, and we'll be able to take full advantage of that. A strong conclusion, Krishna, and I'm sorry that's all the time we've got. Thank you very much, Krishnan, and Francoise, and Ruth, and Ben. Again, American education has never been in such ferment, and you are helping in the ferment. Thank you. Till this next, this same time next week.